And yeah, you see, these are real ads. Now, scientific evidence on the effects of smoking. It's also very famous. You see a few more examples yeah, the other, on the right hand side. Cigarettes do not cause cancer. Leading doctors in the field of cancer research insist. And then this was also a very famous campaign by Camel Cigarettes. More doctors smoke Camel than any other cigarette. In every state of the union, doctors in every branch of medicine were asked, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor? In this nationwide survey of general practitioners, surgeons, throat specialists, diagnosticians, and so on, the brand named most was Camel. Yes, according to this survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. And yeah, just a few figures, some of them that worked within government. All right. Some of them that worked within governments and the significance of this is today we're being told to blindly believe that the governments and the scientific establishment, the mainstream scientific establishment, because there's a lot of good scientists that are being silenced or totally ignored on this. But we are being told that we should just blindly believe them about what's taking place. Well, the reason why I'm sharing this right now is to help you understand that in the past they deceived us and that uh, the tobacco or the smoking cigarettes basically pandemic of that that we are dealing with today is a result of them and their surreptitious activities. So that immediately is grounds to question them moving forward. So with that said, we have Frederick Seitz over here. He's a former president of the National Academy of Sciences, and he has received numerous prestigious awards, guys. Then another guy, he worked for the National Cancer, of, uh, the National Cancer Institute. He was the former deputy director of the National Cancer Institute, and then he's on Victor Backus payroll. And he's actually the current editor-in-chief of the journal Regulatory Toxicology and Pharmacology. Another guy, this guy was a former chief science advisor in the FDA in the United States for 25 years, guys. Dr. William Gary Flynn. Also the former president of both the American College of Toxicology and the International Society for Regulatory Toxicology, in pharmacology, and he also was a former advisor and consultant to the World Health Organization. And yeah, we have another guy, also had influence over the World Health Organization. So it's important that I'm pointing this out. One of the reasons why I use these examples is so you can understand that despite the World Health Organization's very high level of authority that people blindly trust, oh, it's the World Health Organization, they can still be influenced, okay, by toxic influences. Here we have Dr. Ragnar Rylander, he was a former advisor and member of the World Health Organization's Expert Advisory Panel on Occupational Health. He was also an advisor to the Swedish Board of Health and Welfare and the Swedish National Food Administration, so he worked within the government. And he also served as an editorial board member on several scientific journals. And then fast forward to a bit more recent times, Dr. Helen Wigtentaba, he was a former Minister of Foreign Affairs and Minister of Health in Malawi. So high-ranking politician over there. And you'll find, as we go on with this, these, these agents of deception, they have their tentacles in governments all over the world, guys. And he was a former executive board member of the World Health Organization. Okay, this dude, he successfully prevented laws that were going to actually limit the big tobacco company's influence in the so-called third world or developing countries. And he did this by arguing that cigarette smoking and tobacco use, it only affected more wealthy countries. And today we know, of course, that while that was true at the time that he said it, which I think was in the 1990s, it's not true today. Developing countries are the ones suffering the most from cigarette smoke. And they're using a lot of the tactics they used on the United States and England that, that a lot of researchers have since unearthed and exposed. They're using that now, actually, on developing nations. And his brother was the president of the International Tobacco Growers Association, and they had interest in the tobacco companies. 